they got to find one a little closer. Call the meeting of the City Council. It's a special meeting this evening. I ask you to please stand and join with me as we salute the American flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councilors and guests, I would just ask that you remain standing just for a couple of, couple of seconds. And as we all know, today is December 7th. Today is Pearl Harbor Day. It's only appropriate that we remember those and, and uh, through our family and our, our own uh, relatives of many years ago that fought through this uh, war, we remember this day. Also, just to take a moment of silence for those 14 um, lives that were lost in San Bernardino, California. Again, a situation that's, that's become very sad into our lifestyle of each and every day. And there were some others, uh, many others that were injured, so let's all you know, think of them for a, a moment, they and their families and those that were left behind. <coughs> Thanks, everyone. Please be seated. What you doing? This item, oh, Mr. Yes. Clerk, the first item we have. Thank you. We have the call of the meeting. Accept it, please. Accepted and placed on file. We have the officer's return of notice. Accepted and placed on file. And we have audit that the city council hereby determines the percentages of the local tax levy yeah, okay. in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 56, to be borne by each class of real property as defined in Section 2A of Chapter 59 and personal property. And, Councilors, as you uh, always are aware of the fact that we, every December, set a new tax rate, and that's what we're here to do this evening. That's why we're having a special meeting of the City Council. And I'm going to be calling a public hearing, and that public hearing will allow those that wish to come before us and speak on behalf of uh, the tax rate uh, issue that is on our agenda this evening. Again, I remind all of you as counselors and I remind everyone as guests that, again, the public hearing is designed for us to listen to you. It is not in any way any type of a debate. It's all taken under advisement. And then at that point in time when uh, the hearing is through, I'll declare a close of the hearing, and then the City Council will begin okay. to do their liberation, deliberation excuse me, in regards to setting a new um, tax rate for the fiscal year 2016. So with that being said, in, in the time frame, I believe it's about just about 7.48 p.m. I'm sorry, 6.48 p.m. And I'm going to declare the hearing open. If anyone wishes to come uh, forth, please state your name, address, uh, business that you may be representing. Um, the clerk will write that all down, and you have every right to, to make a comment. So at this time, if anyone wishes to be heard, the podium is here. Mr. Cooney. Mr. Chairman. Seems awful familiar, doesn't it? Every year. It does, uh, every year. It's just, it's just a different face here, that's all. That's right. right? Although I, in the 18 years I've been here, you've been in that, that role <laughs> a few times. So uh, thank you for the opportunity just to speak on behalf of the business community. My name is Chris Cooney. I'm president of the Metro South Chamber of Commerce. We serve about 1,000 companies in the 18 communities uh, surrounding Brockton. Half of those members are from the city here in uh, Brockton. We own uh, property, as you know, across the street, the former Thomas Edison uh, power station, which was renovated this past year uh, by private contributions uh, totaling over $300,000. Uh, we pay taxes on that property uh, each and every year, and uh, as do many of our members. I'm here tonight, uh, as I have been in the past, to remind you of the value, really, of businesses in this community and what they provide and what they don't take from the community. Uh, so just briefly, the jobs that they provide, the tax revenues that they provide uh, are a, a tremendous contribution to this community. In fact, of the 18 communities that we represent, nine have split tax rates. Those communities are usually communities that are more mature and developed, uh, that have a, a tax base uh, where they can afford to split the rate and charge the businesses. <laughs> a higher rate, and in most cases they charge a much higher rate. Um, yet those businesses do not have school-age school, uh, school ch age children. Uh, they pay for their own uh, trash removal, uh, security, permits, uh, maintenance, uh, all of that. And uh, in many cases, uh, in this modern day and age, uh, Brockton is no longer the only game in town. There are other uh, communities that have developed 
industrial parks and uh, business zones um, that are attractive. And in fact, if you don't need city water and sewer, you may be able to save, uh, on average, as, you, as we've illustrated in past years, ten to $12,000 a year in a, in a community uh, that has a single tax rate. Uh, in fact, a rate that, in some instances, is less than half of what the city of Brockton has. As I said back in 2005-2006, uh, or as I've said in the past, uh, <laughs> this community ended up on relocation uh, or in re relocation packages for companies because the value is too much to resist. Uh, so companies looking to relocate out of Boston sure. maybe didn't want to be in Brockton necessarily. They wanted to be south of Boston. Um, but the, the value that was presented in terms of an existing building that was available, uh, the water rate, the sewer rate, the access to employees, to colleges, to road systems, to rail, to good schools, uh, the tax rate even at that time was too much to resist. And in fact, it attracted companies, no. many, uh, to, to the city that maybe weren't planning on coming here. They were on their way down to Middleborough. They were on their way down to Taunton. Uh, com uh, communities that had uh, new facilities, new roads, new industrial parks, uh, tax incremental financing and all that. But uh, the value here was too irresistible. And quite frankly, the location. Uh, I think we all recognize that the location here uh, in Brockton, uh, especially for companies moving out of Dorchester, South Boston, that area, uh, is superior because their employees, many of their co these companies' employees, will come to Brockton, uh, but they may <coughs> not go further <coughs> south. So I'm here just simply to request um, restraint on, <laughs> on raising the tax, uh, taxes any more than they have been. Uh, this council has, I think, been fairly prudent over the last four years or five years since we've really discovered that our rates have become uh, not competitive. Yeah, uh, no longer uh, is it true that our water and sewer rates are significantly less uh, or th at least not being uh, they're, uh, aspiring to a much higher rate. And uh, no longer is our tax rate uh, like it was in 2006, which was competitive. Yeah. I'm asking you to maintain uh, uh, the rate and move it more towards 150. Uh, I know you have a packet here that kind of illustrates what the ramifications are of that. Um, but uh, I, I, th I think more, uh, a more competitive rate will attract more companies to the area, which will increase demand, <laughs> which will increase the values, which will then increase your ability to raise more taxes off the existing uh, commercial stock. And I think that's the approach we've kind of been looking at here. I'd, I'd like to see us be more aggressive as a community uh, and uh, build the value of the existing businesses that are already here and the value of the property, the commercial property that's here. Uh, that's our, simply our only way uh, out of this, uh, given the fact that the city is com almost completely built out. Thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Cooney. <coughs> is there anyone else here that would like to be heard? In regards to this matter as well, please come forward and state your name and address uh, to Thank the clerk. <coughs> Anyone else that wants to be heard? Any resident? Anyone that wishes to be heard? This is the time to, to be heard in regards to this uh, particular matter. Seeing none, then I'm going to declare that part of the uh, meeting closed, the public hearing part closed. John, you want to be heard? You want to be heard now? Thank you. Good evening, Councilors. Good evening. I'd like to make a brief statement concerning the fiscal year 2016 tax rate classification here. First, I'd like to thank the entire staff of the Assessor's Office for their support and assess assistance throughout the year. The assessed values for the fiscal year 2016 represent the estimate of market value as of January 1st, 2015, utilizing verified sales data from calendar year 2014. Assessments represent 100% of market value as required by Massachusetts general law. The Department of Revenue has certified the values for the city as well as the new growth value. The assessors are required to fairly assess 27,512 parcels in the city. There are 16,532 single-family dwellings, 2,904 residential condominiums, 3,494 two- and three-family dwellings, 1,438 parcels of vacant residential land, 
397 apartment buildings, 127 multiple use properties, 1748 commercial and industrial properties, and 1,589 personal property accounts. The total taxable value of all real and personal property in the city is six billion. $104,303,935. This is the first year since 2009 the total taxable value exceeds $6 billion. This year, the city added a total of $2,938,439 new growth in residential, commercial, and personal property. This year's new growth is the largest amount of new growth in the city since 1985. <clears throat> the medium single family assessed value for fiscal year 2016 has increased 13.06 percent from 171,500,000 th to 193,900 dollars, whereas the median commercial assessed value for fiscal 2016 only increased 1.23 percent. People often associate rising assessments with rising taxes. However, this is not the case. Rising budgets cost rising taxes. If the budget increases, typically taxes increase. If the budget decreases, typically taxes decrease. The assessed value represents the market value of the property. If all assessments went down 25% and the budget increases, taxes would still increase. The purpose of this classification hearing is to adopt the residential factor. The City Council will decide how much of the tax levy the owners of residential properties will pay and how much of the tax levy owners of commercial, industrial, and personal properties will pay. This decision is what creates two tax rates or a split rate in the City of Brockton. If there was no shift, there would be one rate. And based upon this year's levy, the single family, the single rate for the city of Brockton would be $20.40. If the council decided on a single rate, the average single family bill would increase $842.43 and the average commercial tax bill would decrease $3,025.08 for fiscal 2016. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, please refer to the packet that I supplied. Um, Page one and two of the packet are common questions and answers regarding the classification hearing. Page three are the top taxpayers in the city of Brockton, which are mainly commercial properties and personal property accounts. Page four is a comparison of residential tax bills for contiguous towns and other split rate communities. Brockton continues to have the lowest single family tax bill of, of surrounding towns based upon fiscal year 2015 data, which is $3,308.28 and only a $64 increase over fiscal 2014. The average tax bill in the city is $1,031 lower than the average bill of all above towns, including Brockton. <coughs> The chart and graph on page five shows that the current taxable value of the city is $6,104,303,935. This is a gain of 11.74% from fiscal year 2015 and is the largest one year gain since 2006. This trend appears to be continue, continuing in the calendar year of 2015. The chart on page six is a breakdown of the total taxable value of the city for fiscal year 2016 by state class and use. The report also shows a breakdown of parcels by class code. The chart on page seven is a value comparison between fiscal year 2015 and 16. The chart shows a percentage change per property type and the total percentage change of the total taxable value. The percentage of total value for the re total residential class increased 1.98% from 2015 to 2016, and the percentage of total value for total commercial class decreased 1.62%.
Therefore, the total burden on the residential class has increased due to the increased assessed values of residential properties. The, the chart on page 8 is the tax levy growth. To determine the tax levy for fiscal year 2016, you take <coughs> last year's levy of $118,661,379 plus the new growth of $2,938,438 plus the 2.5%, which is $2,935,074, which gives you the fiscal year 2016 levy of $124,534,892. The actual levy limit for fiscal year 2016 is $127,045,434. So you subtract the actual levy of $124,534,892, which leaves $2,510,542, the amount the city did not include in the levy. The chart on page 9 is the historical levy percent borne by each class. The City Council has adopted a factor of 1.56% in three out of the last four years. <clears throat> the chart on page 10 shows by category the new growth valuation and the increase in tax levy from the new growth. The form on page 11 depicts how the tax levy limitation for fiscal year 2016 was calculated. The charts on page 12 and 13 show what the actual tax rates would be for residential and commercial properties based upon factors from 1.5 to 1.65. If council chose the same factor as last year, 1.56, the residential rate would be $17.42, which would result in a, an increase of the tax of $265.01 to the average residential tax bill. The commercial industrial rate would be $31.83 and a tax savings of $379.04 to the average commercial tax bill. The board has also supplied pages 14, 15, and 16 which briefly explains Proposition 2 and a half, annual limit, levy limit, new growth, and annual levy ceiling. Thank you, and I will now take some questions. Uh, once, I close the, once I close the public hearing. Okay. Okay, then, we, then we'll go into that, okay, John? Is there anyone else that wishes to be heard on this, this matter before I close the public hearing? No one else? Seeing none, the public hearing has been closed. At this point in time, councillors, uh, we have heard from Mr. O'Donnell, and uh, I, I believe, I know, Mr. Condon, do you have anything <coughs> you'd like to present at, at this time as well? Okay. Uh, so if anyone has any questions uh, in regards to Mr. O'Donnell or, or Mr. Condon, we can take them now and can remain <coughs> seating, uh, sitting down during this process. <coughs> Councilor Stewart. Great. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. O'Donnell. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I don't think we've actually had the chance to sort of meet personally, have we, except no. in passing. So it's, it's, I appreciate yeah. your putting this together for us. Thank you. Uh, You're welcome. Two questions. One, to help clarify my understanding, and the second is I was a, a bit confused by something that you said, which is probably my own misunderstanding, so I wanted to clarify that as well. Okay. So on personal property, just so that people, so that those who are watching on TV understand, personal property is really essentially the, for the equipment and businesses, not personal property in a exactly. person's home. Uh, intangible uh, assets. Okay. And then we make that determination by doing site visits to businesses to determine the value of personal property. How is that done? Yes. And a lot of it comes directly from the Department of Revenue because um, the big utilities have to supply that information. So we get the information directly from them. Okay. I see. Um, okay, so I just want to make sure that people understood that personal property wasn't property no, in your residential like home that was Columbia taxed somehow. Did all the construction on the west side, all those new pipes they put in, they get taxed on that. That's new growth. Okay. And then the comment that you made that I just wasn't, I was a bit confused by. So the increase in taxes is both due to our increase in the budget, but also increase in assessment. No, you made it seem as if 
if an increase in assessment has nothing to do with the increase no, in the taxes. No, it would be an increase in the budget. So explain taxes it to me again. based on the budget. So if I have a home that's taxed at a certain rate and the value of that home increases over time, then wouldn't my taxes well, also the, increase? Right. No, the budget goes, is, if the budget goes up, yes, but if the budget goes down and stays stable, your value is going to stay the same. Your taxes will stay the same. Okay, so just talk me through that again because I'm not understanding it. Well, yeah, well, let's really try. I mean, if you had a $125,000 house, I don't, how can you, sorry. Uh, basically, the tax levy is determined <laughs> by the assessments and the amount of spending that the city council has uh, determined to approve in the appropriations. So once you've determined the amount of spending and the assessed values, the rest of it is just mathematics to come up with a rate. So if the assessed values are going up, say, at 10 percent a year, and the um, spending only goes up at 5 percent a year, the balancing is going to occur if nobody's value is changing at a different rate than, their, than the average. If everybody's going up at 10 percent, the balancing is going to occur by reducing the tax rate. So that the, a lower rate would then determine the higher amount of levy. That it's just a mathematical process. So if assessments go up and the spending doesn't go up, the tax rate would go down. And if the spending goes down while the assessments go up, then the tax bill would actually go down. But the tax rate itself just balances out the levy as a percent of value. So if I'm living in a certain part of the city where, for whatever reason, the property values in that part of the city increases, um, so my house is not worth 100000 but it's now worth 200000 mm -hmm. I would not see an increase in the amount of taxes that I pay? It would depend upon how much spending is being undertaken in the city that year. If the spending stayed the same. If the spending stayed the same. My, and my value of my house. Up, yeah then your levy uh, or your tax bill would be the same, but your tax rate would be lower to give you the same bill. Right. The tax rate would be lower, but the, tax, um, but the actual amount would be the same? If the spending didn't increase, I mean, everything else is staying equal right. now. If the spending didn't e increase and your assessment went up, but the spending didn't change, then your tax rate would go down to produce the same tax bill. Got it. Okay, thank you. That's and helpful. then the rest of it all has to do with that not everybody is going to be the same because you've got assessing on different properties, but we're talking about on an average, on an average basis there. Okay. So if the spending goes down and the tax bill would go down. The spending goes up, probably the tax bill goes up, and the rate's the balancing factor. All right, great. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor. Any other Councilor Sullivan? Chairman, thank you. Uh, Mr. O'Donnell, first of all, I want to thank you, John, for, uh, for your staff and yourself preparing this. I think it's very helpful. In terms of um, the, 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 and you already said this, the factor at 1.56, if we kept it that, it does hit a, have a 265 and a penny uh, relative to the residential. And I, so I don't, I humbly don't think we can keep it there. Um, but if we looked at what um, Mr. Cooney recommended, and I want to thank Chris for what he does, 1.5, I mean, that would even increase the residential side of $327 and then be a, a negative uh, decrease of 664 bucks. Um, so, so I guess, I guess I'd be asking either you or Mr. Condon. And um, we do this, and I've been on the council 10 years now. What, 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 what do you see as, in your professional opinion, what do you see the number as? I, I can't comment on that. Uh, how about Mr. Jay Condon? Because yeah, I, Jay, I've asked you this question in the past. Assessors are not supposed to make a yeah. recommendation on this, but I, I can. Basically, I think it depends upon what the city's elected officials' objective is with respect to the uh, relationship between business taxes and residential taxes. In the long run, I'm not talking about any particular year, but in the long run, in a city like Brockton, as yep. uh, Chris Cooney said, the way you keep residential tax rates down, if you're not going to reduce your budget, but you've got spending increase that you have to undertake, the way you keep your residential tax rates down is to have a greater share of the city's value represented by commercial businesses. Commercial industry, yep. And what's happened instead in the time I've been here now, about a quarter of a century, you've seen the share of the city's value that is residential go from less than 70 percent when I first got here to about 80 percent. 
And so residential values are going up at a pretty rapid rate, except for that big dip we saw uh, with the, as a result of the uh, recession of 2008, where residential values collapsed. But other than that, residential values have been on a pretty decent upward progression. But commercial values haven't, because the business areas of the city have pretty much built out. You don't have an awful lot of place where you can get new development. We don't have a nice industrial park like uh, Taunton has. So that means you need to uh, help the businesses that are here and encourage new businesses to relocate to the extent that properties become vacant. And a high tax rate can be an impediment to that. I don't think that you see most businesses leave the city because of the tax rate. They sometimes talk about it, but that's a pretty disruptive decision to make and they lose workers. But a company that which is looking to relocate to a community and looks at Brockton also has a chance to look at Stoughton or West Bridgewater or Bridgewater or Middleborough or Taunton, and that's where the tax rate gets in the way. The other problem Brockton faces is if you look at how the city was built, there was almost no commercial project that I can think of that doesn't have some kind of impact on residents in the area. We just don't have a city geographic structure that allows you to just nicely isolate these projects. So there's always some form of opposition to commercial development because there are residents who are concerned because justifiably they're affected by the development. That complicates our, our work. But I think long run, if you're looking to keep residential taxes down, the best way to do it is to have a growing commercial tax base that allows you to shift without being punitive to shift to the res, uh, residential taxes onto that base. In the short run, when you get into a year like this where the residential values are up by 15%, I guess, or 13% and commercials essentially flat, to move in the direction that Chris Cooney is asking for becomes really difficult. You just pointed it out. There's a, no matter what you do tonight, probably everybody's going to have a tax rate decrease. But almost certainly every resident, it's almost impossible to avoid a tax bill increase for the residents. And many of the decisions on the factors will result in a tax bill decrease for commercial. So the factor to me is just a means to an end. It's not really where the focus should be. The focus should be having a fair distribution of that tax burden one to the other. Okay. And I think where I'd like to see us at least stay where we are, but that's going to be a tough decision to make. I know that by looking at that chart. But if you move back toward 1.6 or even beyond 1.6, it means at some point in the future you may have to make a pretty drastic move in the other direction because from one year to the next, these values can be moving at rates of increase or de decrease, which are different. So my recommendation would be try not to get too far above 1.56, but know that even if you don't maintain that, there's probably a factor in there which will result in most commercial getting a tax bill decrease. I think that's... And that's, a, that's an outstanding objective to achieve. I mean, I, I, thank you for that, Joe. I mean, <coughs> if you look at 1.64, it's still going to be an increase to the residential side of 181 bucks, yes. whereas you're going to get a negative uh, $1.69 on the commercial side. Now, I've been on the council for 10 years, and I, the, only, the only business I can think that ever left Brockton is Sorelli Foods. I mean, we've had Keneally, we've had Bernardi, we've had Crown, because we offer TIFFs. Yes. I mean, when, when Leo Meehan came before us relative to potentially leaving W.B. Mason, we gave him a TIFF and they stayed. So, so I, I, you know, I, humbly, I, I just, I don't, I don't buy that argument because it's a pass-through. So I, I think that we're in a tough situation because, you know, the adage, we're damned if we do, we're damned if we don't. But at the end of the day, um, you know, we need, as collectively as a, as a council, we need to make sure that these numbers, I mean, even if we went to the bottom line, 1.65, still a hundred and seventy two dollar increase right. yes ex that's that's right that's on the residential side I mean it's that's right that's right but even with that your average tax bill on the residents is going to be quite a bit lower than the surrounding communities right so right. Uh, and I think my recommendation I would, I'd rather not see it go that far away from the present factor but I understand the motivation in that because you're asking the residents to pay more taxes if you don't if you don't move toward a higher factor thank you thank you mr. chairman thank you council council Rodriguez uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. O'Donnell, if I could just ask you a quick question. I believe um, last year, it was my first year on the council, we actually had gotten the same uh, spreadsheet from the uh, person who was here before you. And it did talk about the, uh, the average family bill. But I think I, I and a couple other councillors wanted to know what... Um, what the commercial rates were for the neighboring community, the neighboring communities, because you've got a list here of all the uh, 
the neighboring communities what the single families are paying or what the uh, residents are paying, but we have no idea what the, uh, the commercial rates are in those communities as well. Well, the single rate communities would have the same rate. No, I'm talking about the same ones that you listed here. Easton has the same rate as their residential. West Bridgewater, same rate. Uh, Abington, same rate. So I didn't look up the commercial. I can get that to you, but they don't. It's, it's far less than Brockton. Commercial? Commer oh, yeah. Yes. The, the commercial rate is far less than, than what Brockton is? Yes. Even with the uh, TIFs and, uh, and all these uh, nonprofit organizations that we have in the community that do not pay any taxes, they, it's still significant less? The commercial rate in the budding towns? Yes. Oh, yeah, it's considerably less. So is there any way we can get a copy of that? Or yeah, I can look can we get I can that? go right on the website and look it up. Okay. DOR. I'd appreciate Point it. information, Mr. Chairperson. Those so those just those because a, a neighboring town has a lower rate doesn't mean they're paying actually less in taxes, though, because exactly. the value of the properties are Values. more. But actually, what, that's what I was looking for, to see exactly what these commercial properties are paying in terms of taxes to those communities, not the rates themselves. Because we know that our rate, so just like the residential the rate is higher, the average bill that the, uh, the commercial businesses are paying yes, those I communities. I can get that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councilor Dubois. Thank you. Hello, Mr. O'Donnell. How are you doing tonight? Well. Wait. I have a couple questions of, um, on page six. Do you have your packet? There's a, it says a, a, a billion dollars in exempt value at the bottom of the page. <clears throat> So when you are calculating the value, it's just a clarification question for me. When you're calculating the valuation and the percent, so you said uh, residential is what, like you said 70 percent or yeah. something like that. Um, does yes. that take this billion dollars of exempt value into no, account? No, they're not included, no. And uh, where does this billion dollars of exempt property taxes and valuation um, does that mostly rest on the residential side or the commercial or industrial side? It have to, it's probably split across. We don't, they're not tax properties. So Th that's just, that's a, uh, the state requires us to assess those properties. So we come up with a yeah, number. Yeah, because we want to see what kind of, uh, you know, free giveaways we're giving, right? The state is, is good like that. They give you oversight. Yeah. So can conscious. you give us a breakdown of what makes up that billion dollars of valuation across the different types of property types? Yes. And I'm, I'm betting after 10 years on the city council that like 90% of that or a good 80% rests on the commercial industrial side. Well, with it, our our TIFs would be involved, right? It would be the VA hospital, sure. Massasoit, all the city properties. Right. So and any type of business Brockton tip. Hospital is $70 million. Right. So that, that's where it's... Right. And but so the, pro the biggest one would be the VA hospital complex. So then when we look at um, page 3... It has um, the city of Brockton top taxpayers, and I'm just seeing that there are, like, some of the numbers are kind of surprising to me. So, um, so as an example, Harbor One Credit Union pays $467,000 in taxes? Taxes. Okay. But nothing for personal property, so there's no value inside their billion buildings or anything well, like that? they're incorporated so they don't pay personal property tax. How do they get around that? There's different categories. The state. We don't. Is that like another exempt value that we would see in the. No, I don't think one, so. One bill, no. No, like manufacturers don't pay any personal property tax. Like manufacturing companies, they're exempt from paying taxes. So, um, in a lot of ways, there's built-in exemptions for the corporations. Yes, and matters how. Already getting value added based on you know exemptions or their personal property or tiffs they might be getting or some other type of you know um, decrease of their tax, tax bill. Base, Whereas, yeah. like the average resident is getting a de decrease of like what something like 300 bucks if they're a widow or what is that like? And then yes. we we have that work off tax program that's never even been started even though the city council no, um, passed that bill when do we start that it's been started eight people did it this past year eight people so far yeah so so we've got like these really considerable um tax uh breaks 
relative terms to the individual that's getting them in their home so they could stay in their home. But when you look at the number, it's much less than the breaks that we're giving to corporations and industry to come here. When you really just look at the raw number, wouldn't you say? Could you give us that breakdown? Of the exemptions that they yeah. get? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can. I would love come to see that something. because that would help me realize when we're setting this rate um, where the where where the savings real the true savings are because they're already like when we're looking at setting the rate from on page 12 to page 13. I'm just trying to drill down into it. So if we were to say go to 1.65 and the single family home at a $171 increase. And the business um, commercial rate would be $44 more. Um, that doesn't really include a whole bunch of other tax breaks that, these, that the business is already starting off at at a better, well, better I don't place, know how right? Because they don't pay in personal property and they're not. Oh, well, residents don't pay personal property tax. That's true, but that, that's the federal government saying that. That isn't oh, you or I. communities you know. that pay personal property tax. It is, but still, tax. come in my house and value my personal property. Well, 400 bucks. But thank you very much. Can I ask Mr. Condon a question? <laughs> Councilor, can you Hi, Mr. Condon. How are you? Good. Um, when we're looking at this, say we were to go to 1.65, what would the ramifications be next year on the next year's tax rate? Where, where would, what would, what would the sheet look like in front of me at that point? If you move to 165 this year, mm -hmm. it would depend upon next year's revaluation year for the city. So all of those commercial properties would have to be examined by the assessors and the answer to the question would be what happens to the re residential appreciation and value compared to the commercial appreciation and value. But what would my options be as far as um, the, the factor? Is, um, I guess what I'm trying to say is this is the highest we can move. We can't go higher. We couldn't go to like um, 1.75. Yeah, I think that is an option. That is an option. It's just not on the sheet. Yeah, not on the sheet. But it is How an option. How far up can we go? 1.75. Yeah, I get the list. Do you have Because isn't that another, um, isn't that another that. option? You can only go you, so far. There is, a, there is a cap on it. I think the what cap is, cap? is, I think the cap is 1.75. To get to 175, you need to get to 15 first, and we're already at 15, so you could go to 175. Is there a reason why that wasn't included on the sheet as an option? I mean, it's almost like you're kind of shifting our no. focus to no, it was, it was have for, us go where you for, want first, to go. First of all, I think the only intent was to show uh, something could be shown on one page. So I've just never seen it. So, like in my last 10 years, and I could be wrong, but as my just my memory serves, we've always been given the the high number as well as far up as, as we could go. And then I remember Tom always, Bro, Councilor Brophy always speculating how far up that would put us and right. where we could go in future years. And I just, I, I find it a little disheartening that that wasn't included um, this year. Well, do, you've got do it. Do you ever remember it not being included in the past? Yeah, I think it's some years it's been, it's been included and some years it hasn't. I've never I think remembered the, that. I think this particular year the idea was to simply give you a range which was would result in a tax bill decrease for commercial or break even and if you want to go higher than 165 that's a big move to go from 156 to beyond 165. It sure is. I'm, I'm just thinking that when you know it's not really giving for maybe some city councilors who haven't been here and learned through 10 years of experience that there is a top number and if they're just sitting here and they didn't know maybe they would think 1.65 was the highest they could actually go so it really skews their ability to rationalize where their options lie. Uh, and it kind of like, it's almost like a, I don't want to say a perversion of what they think they can do. Well, I hope you don't say perversion. Kind of like a little bit I would like of to a, say um, it's not a perversion. Here's last year's sheet, Council. Last year's sheet went from 1 to 166. Yeah. 166. Well, I guess I had to have a problem with last year's as well. I think that, you know, we should be given our full range of options so we well, can Well, you've got it there that. now, Council. Now I do that I asked, so I appreciate that you actually gave us what you probably should have given us in the first place. Um, and thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council. Council Monahan. Yes. Mr. O'Donnell. <laughs> oh, did I say, I didn't say John. Hey, how you doing, John? Good. All right, so. How? So you're saying most of these surrounding towns are doing basically a 50 50 split on the, t on the tax levy, right? I can't believe if you say, It's like at the one, the fact of. They have a single rate, but it's, yeah. it's the same okay. business as zero. They're splitting, well, maybe residential, more or less, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Just yeah. how, 
Now, <clears throat> obviously, the residential is the valuations of, the, of their property. How is the um, commercial? It's not set by the property. What is that? Is that a different formula? How is that valuation? Well, it's based on income and sales. It's based, based on income, income and sales? Yes. So we do an income <laughs> approach. Hmm? An income approach will be done on a commercial property, whereas okay. a residential property is no income approach. Right. Okay. It's not on sales. All right. Well, I guess people confused on it. They think it's the value of the, of the property that they're on, the commercial, I mean. It's well, it is, it, but the value is arrived at through the income approach. Okay. So do, is there, I'm trying to figure out, because the, the, the rate, it seems to be the, the um, per thousand rate seems to be the issue for, for the commercial. I mean, that's what I hear. It's a lot of, like, now, if we, if we go to 1.56 um, for um, residential this year, we're going to be down from the commercial, I mean, from the residential per thousand rate. And that's always seems to be everybody gets crazy about it, saying that our, our, our rate is so high per thousand. Now, it's going to go, actually go down, but your taxes are going to go up. So that exactly. argument that people like to try to make all the time is out the window. It's the total taxes, which everybody seems to uh, exactly. have their argument, a little crazy argument that way. But anyway, um, so the commercial rate, it would be going, what was it last year? 33.88. 33.88. So we're going to give them a, to go down to 31.38 if we stay at the same, if we stay at that same. Exactly. That same uh, rate. Okay. Uh, and the surrounding towns, what are, what are they per thousand on the average? 20, 24, is it, um, what, what is their average uh, per thousand? I'll have to figure it out. Uh, for commercial? I don't, yeah. I didn't provide that. I only had the residential. We have no idea on that. Well, I can look it up. I can get it to you, right? I mean. Okay, okay. But, and I'm not going to blame you, but these guys are right, because last year we said the same thing. We want to compare it to the surrounding towns. But that doesn't have any factor. I'd like to see New Bedford. Money, just the money. Huh? Go ahead. I'm sorry. It doesn't have any factor on our tax rate, what another town charges. No, but what I'm saying is the argument is always, <clears throat> I mean, I want to give the commercial, we want to give them a, a break. We want to make sure they want to come here. But the argument always is that the rate is $31. It's not, the, but it's the tax bill. It's the total tax bill, not what the rate is. Correct. That, I understand that. But what I'm saying is the argument that we always hear is it's, the, I, I know what you're saying, because I know that is, the, the thing is a total tax bill. That's why when people used to argue with us and saying, oh, we got the highest tax rate residential, I'm saying, well... Because the assessments are low in the city. Exactly. But, I mean, that used to be the argument, and the people used to go crazy on that against us, saying, oh, it's so high, it's so high. It goes, the tax bills are like, like the 267th lowest. So, I mean, what are you complaining about? But the <laughs> argument on the commercial side is the same thing, per 1,000. The total... I just wanted to compare the total tax bill in Brockton, commercial-wise, with the surrounding towns. I think that's what we need to look at, because it's not, not the actual per thousand that, that uh, people, to us, I mean, uh, Mr. Cooney says that, that 31 is always, or whatever it was, they would say, we want to get a high, I mean, get above 31, 32 per thousand. That's the argument. I just want to know what the, it is, commercial-wise, the total taxes with the surrounding towns. I think that's what everybody else wants to know, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. Good, Jim. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, we don't, well, was I supposed to see these pictures? What is <laughs> Anything else, Councillor? No, that's good. Thanks. Everything else? Everyone else out there? Right. Any others? Councillor Barnes. Uh, yes. Um, Mr. O'Donnell, I just have a question. This, with this new sheet, I'm one of the new ones. I, I wasn't here last year, and then the first year we just kind of watched. So with this additional sheet that you provided, I'm kind of lost. So if you could just go through with me. So at 165, I see... I see where it correlates to the, the packet that you gave us. So tell me what the 166 rate means on this additional sheet that you gave me. Where, where can I find like a 171.94 number on here? On the far right, on the far right is the estimated tax rates. Okay, but... So for one, 166 would be 1694 so residential. I'm doing it right now. Let's just right, but I'm looking at the change. Where can I find like a dollar amount change on this 11 by or whatever, no, it's not 14? On there. It's not on there. Okay, so. It gives the rates. It's not there. 
Okay, but it, th this this was just a lot easier to kind of comprehend when, when we were talking earlier today. I was understanding it fine, but now that that this has kind of been introduced, I I, I can't really see what. Oh, no, the there isn't any. It's only what the rates will be on this sheet. Right. I, I guess. Not what the savings of the, uh, the yeah. increase will be. Yeah. Yeah. That changes. Um, it's too late to get that though, right? There's no way to kind of get that to do that today. Okay, but then I mean we've determined that the rate doesn't necessarily um, correlate to the amount. Mr. Cooney, please take your seat. What world do we live in? Come on, excuse me. Go ahead, continue. Sorry. It doesn't necessarily correlate to the amount of cash money. No. So so this Just doesn't really. I mean, it gives us the rate, but like, like Councillor uh, Stewart and Monaghan said, it doesn't necessarily mean there would be a savings, a particular savings. No, well, the, the lower you go, the higher you go to a factor, there's going to be a bigger savings to the residential base. It's going to cost the commercial more. Right, right. Okay. But it's just not in. Okay. It's not indicated. All right. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Stewart. Is there anyone else before Councillor Stewart? Because you've already had one. Well, go ahead, Councilor Stewart. Just more of a comment. That, uh, some of my colleagues have requested additional information to help them decide on the vote, and it looks like this additional information is coming not today. We're voting on this today, correct? Or we post? I, I, if, or I, I we? Think you're here at the deadline right here today. That's why we're here tonight. So i be set. So the question for me is, what but, is the process for colleagues getting the additional information if I'm that information is not it's coming to It's going to be awful tonight. hard to get in order to be, unless I call another special meeting and, you know, we could do that Saturday morning, I guess, if that's what someone wants to do. But I, I think we're out of time on that too, Mr. Conner. Am I correct? Tell them how to give it to us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have to mail out tax bills so we can keep the city services moving forward. In my personal opinion, this just clouded, clouds the issue as far as I'm concerned. That's all that does for me. Clouds the issue. Yeah. But for the 12 years I've been here, it's been based right. upon what I see right in front of me. We make the decision as best as we can, as wise as we can. We know we want to save some dollars, but it's I'm awful gonna, tough to do during sure. a difficult economy, difficult times within the city. If anyone's paying attention, if you read an article in yesterday's Globe, it even indicated the state that's fallen behind and not catching up with the economy is the state of Massachusetts because of all the, the problems that we have. So it's very difficult. I know everyone wants to solve something and save something, but it's tough. We have to make that decision. I know it's difficult. I've been doing it for 12 years as well. It's very difficult to do, but I think that paper just clouded it. We don't have time to give out on the information. We know we have to set it, the tax rate every December, not because Mr. Condon tells us to, like some people say, he tells us to do. It's because the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, through the Department of Revenue, says every city and town has to set a new tax rate. So if we're going to sit here and start to pick it apart and debate because I can't understand 10 cents, 15 cents, 20 cents, then we're not going to get anywhere tonight, and we need to get somewhere, councillors. So uh, I yield the floor. That was just my, my comment, and I think that needs to be ahead. clarified. Yeah. You're all set, council? Yeah. yeah, thank okay. you, Mr. President. Councillor um, Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Conant, I just had a follow-up for you. Mr. Conant. If, uh, if you could just maybe uh, explain a little further. One of the statements you made uh, during the presentation is if, if, we, go, if we go way below the 1.56, um, you know, we could be in trouble down the line. That's just a paraphrase. Could you explain that for the Council, what that means? Well, um, when you do the next valuation, uh, the commercial properties are going to be probably increased somewhat and the residential properties are on a trend right now where sales are driving them upwards. So the higher you go away from the present factor, you run up against one, number, well, number one is a limit at some point of 1.75 and number two, if you reach a point where you think, boy, we've gone too far, you've got to start coming back to avoid the impact of that and that starts putting a burden on the residents that you're not happy to do. And if you look at the history here, we've done that. We got to, I think, 1.7 maybe six years ago, and we tried to come back from that, and the result of that is when that happens, residents get a bigger increase than, than they'd like, which is why I think it's always best to move in gradual increments, not giant moves, because of that impact. If there's a sentiment in the council to go above 165, <laughs> you know, it's... <coughs> I don't want to try to do this mathematics on the fly at 0.01, but at bigger increments that, 165, 17, 175, we can figure out what those differences would be. It's just math. That's 
Thank you, sir. So if you Thank if you if you if you've got a if you've got a sentiment for that, and there's a motion which seems to have support, we can we can figure that out for both commercial and residential. But I think a big move. What? It results in distortions that you may need to change later. Long, yep. Long term. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Councilor Moynihan. Uh, you all set? Yeah. He okay. asked. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Condon. I'm sorry to make you get up. I just have another question for you. So can you just explain one more time what happens if we decide to postpone until we get the information and we don't vote on this tonight? What happens? Well, uh, the, the biggest problem we have is the need to actually mail the tax bills By when? before the end of the month of December. Okay. When you finally set the factor, we need to get the approval of the Department of Revenue that takes a few days because they get all of these communities coming in at the same time. And once we've got the approval, then we need to create the billing file. It's a work between the assessor's office and the collector's office to merge the assessing file into the tax bill file. Um, if you get too late into the month, you run into a problem where you just can't do it. If you don't mail by December 31st, you can't mail out a third quarter bill. And the, you have to do another estimated bill, and the fourth quarter, the entire increase gets put onto that fourth quarter bill. Plus, um, you lose a quarter of your tax levy receipts between mm -hmm. February, March, and April until you can actually mail a lot of bill. Can you tell me why you've waited till now to give us this information? Why couldn't have we taken this up last week so we could have a week to think about it? Why does it so? What the, the oh, tax? Well, I don't, I don't create the package you got tonight. I'm not trying to throw the assessors under the bus, but they were working all week to create this file. I think you had it by the end of the week, and if there was additional information you needed, I think they were here all day. They could have had but it. If we wanted to ask questions before the cameras so everybody at home could hear, it would be kind of difficult well, if we didn't have well, the information. I'm, I'm just, I, just have, I, just, I have a couple more questions on this line. I'm just, I'm not trying to make a Well, we're not here to play to the camera, Councillor. I, I know no, you do, not. but we're not. I mean, and about. I'm just going to defend the fact, to defend, the, I'm going to defend the fact that I set the meeting for a special meeting for this night, as it's always done every December. We always have it as a special meeting. And the package, the package was given out to you on Friday. I made sure they were hand-delivered. You were emailed Thursday, and everyone had the package Friday. Saturday, Sunday, and today, anyone could have made any calls. I, I find it in my own way in seeing things here this evening that we are playing for the camera I'm to what, what, yeah, we are. This is one of my we last are. Meetings. But in any Very case, important. if we have to postpone, then we're going to have to have a, we're going to have to have a fast and furious because if not, we're going to put the city behind. And if that's what you want to do as an outgoing city council, as a new state representative, fine. I'm then we'll do here, that. So I don't think okay. Councilor, do, Councilor Stanford. Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just, uh, Mr. Condon, I'm looking at it. Even if we go down to the very bottom at 1.75, it looks like the, the taxpayers will, will have to pay somewhere around $71.94. That their increase will be around 71 dollars If we go all the way down to 175 Yes. It would be about I mean, 70 as a, as so they, Just roughly, so no matter, it looks like it's about 10 bucks every point one, and so yes. No matter how we look at it, the taxpayers are going to have to... Residential values. We, the taxpayers, yes. are going to have to pay a little bit more the, as, as residents. Residential values will And if you do 175 on the commercial side, it looks like there's going to be a, 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 a bigger increase on the commercial side as well. If it goes to 175, there'll be an increase to commercial, yes. So, Mr. Chairman, I don't know if there are any, uh, any further comments from uh, the I, membership. I, Councilor, I'd like to make a motion. I'll let Councilor Cruz, then we'll go back to you to take a motion, Councilor. Okay. Councilor Cruz. Thank you. I just uh, have been through this now for 10 years, and we, we seem to constantly be talking about the same things. But I would just like to make a comment that mm -hmm. to, to reinforce what Mr. Cotton has told us, we've tried to send a message through these last few years that we need businesses. And Many people miss the fact that as we lose or don't attract businesses, it actually hurts the homeowner in the long run. If we take a big swing, we're only going to be doing what we've had to do with the, with the water rates. Because we've been, as a council, and I'm not talking this particular council, but councils through the years are, are so against doing small water rate increases, we end up having to do large rate increases every 10 years or so, and it hurts. It seems like a huge burden to the homeowners, whereas if we just try to stay without, without a large fluctuation, we'll be away from hurting the homeowners next year, where we'll be, in my opinion, 
almost certainly making a huge change to the homeowner's bill next year. So all I'm asking, please, counselors, try not to look at this as we have to look at the long-range picture, not the short-range picture. Um, and please try not to make a huge change in the factor. It does two things. It sends a terrible message to the business community out there that we're trying to attract to help drop the residential tax bill. The more businesses we can attract, the more we can drop the residential tax bill in the long run. So please think long term, think globally. That's all I'm saying. And try not to t make a huge change in the factor this year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. Councilor Mr. Cruz, if I could just make one comment for the councillor. I think if you go to 1.75, the average commercial bill just quickly looks like it's up about 450. The average residential, you're correct, it's, it's up about 70. But your tax rate for commercial is over $35, for almost $36. Thank you, sir. And I don't think that's a healthy place to be. Council, uh, just Monahan. on that, Council Monahan, one. Yeah, John. So is 175 the max? Yes. Okay. And so any difference, we're going to have, we have to go, we can only go, uh, like you're saying, we'll be, we'll be raising the residential rates again, trying to get back to where we need to be. If there's, like you're saying, a big jump now, we have to go, we have to go back. We can't go down any further for the residential after 175. Yeah. Uh, right now, 175 is the maximum you can do under, under law. You're allowed under law to do that. If you make that move, you're still seeing a residential average bill increase of about 70 bucks. You're seeing a very high commercial rate of over $35, and you're seeing the average commercial bill. And if you look at this, Brockton's a funny city on its commercial tax base. There are a lot of small businesses. If you look at that chart, the average business is only valued about, what, what is it, 200 and something thousand dollars of mm -hmm. average value. Most of the businesses are small businesses. So uh, a $35 rate is not easy for them. Right. So exactly. I, okay. I think my, my recommendation is that, that that's too far. I concur with uh, Councillor Cruz. I can understand the need to make something in addition to 156 yeah. because of the impact of this particular value cycle on the average homeowner. But to get that far, I think, is, uh, is too far. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Not okay, Thank you. Right. All set, uh, Councilor Monahan. All yep, set. Thank okay. You, thank, you. thank you, Mr. Conn. Councilor Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, with all that we've talked about here tonight, I, knowing that there isn't much we can do as taxpayers to avoid a, a tax increase, I like to propose that we, um, we as the council, submit a factor of 1.64. Changing the the taxpayers' bill by about one hundred and eighty one dollars and sixty three cents at the same time keeping the business taxes uh, on a decrease side, therefore we can send a message to the business community that this body at least did not increase their taxes where the residents have actually have taken a good portion of the uh, of the burden so therefore, I want to submit. Uh, in a form of a motion that we accept the fact of 1.64. Second, second on the motion. Second. Motion been made and second and set the fact of 1.64 on the motion. Council Thank you, Sullivan. Mr. Chairman. If, if I, I do want to echo the sentiments of my colleague there because if we do 1.64, um, currently uh, per thousand it's 33.88, $33.88 per thousand right now on the commercial. If we adopt uh, 164, it goes down by 42 cents, 33.46 per thousand. You're still at a negative number of 1.69. Uh, and quite honestly, um, if we go 1.64, it's still an increase, but it's an increase of $15 a month. If you do it times 12 uh, months, it's $181. It's still a savings of $83.38 based upon the current fact of 1.56. So it's not a perfect world, but I, I echo the sentiments of my colleague, and I do support 1.64 factor. Thank you. On the motion, Mr. Thank Chairperson. You. On the motion, uh, just Stewart. So that I'm stating that's uh, that's too drastic of a change, and I will be voting against that that motion. Thank you. Very good. Motion's been made and seconded. We'll call the roll. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Hazak. Yes. Barnes. No. Cruz. No. Dubois. Yes. Ianeri. Yes. Monahan. No. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. No. Stadinsky. No. Sullivan. Yes. Tie vote. Motion fails. Tie vote. Motion fails. We can always come back to it. Mr. President, a motion for a factor of 1.58. Second. Motion has been made and seconded for the factor to be 1.58. That's both single and commercial, correct? Correct. It has to be. <laughs> motion has been made and seconded. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. 
Hazak. No. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Dubois. No. Pioneer. No. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. No. Stewart. Yes. Stadensky. Yes. Sullivan. No. Five, five. Motion fails. Five in favor, five against. The motion yes. fails. Five to five. Motion fails. Council yes. Monaghan. Make a motion for a rate of 1.59. Second. Not going to happen. Motion be made and seconded for the rate to be 1.59. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Azak. No. Barnes. No. Cruz. Yes. Dubois. No. Pioneer. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. No. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. No. Five in favor, five against the motion fails. Chairman, I make a motion, 1.63 factor adoption. 1.63. Second. Motion been made and second for factor of 1.63. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Azak. Yes. Barnes. No. Cruz. No. Dubois. Yes. Ioneri. Yes. Monaghan. No. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. No. Stadinsky. No. Sullivan. Yes. Five in favor, five against. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I make five a motion. Five tie vote. <laughs> um, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion Come that on. we set the rate at 1.57. Mm -hmm. Motion's been made. Second. Se 1.57. Motion's been made and second. Yes. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Azak. No. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Dubois. No. Ioneri. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. No. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. No. Six in favor, Six four, four against. Six to four. We have the factor set at 1.57, correct? 1.57. Yes. Okay, we need to um, take, take a recess. Yeah. Okay. Take a recess We're going to take, a, take about a three, four minute recess.
Sure. Microphone's on. Uh, council's back in the session. Mr. Clerk. In City Council, December 7, 2015, ordered that the City Council hereby determines the percentages of the local tax levy in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 56, to be borne by each class of real property as defined in Section 2A of Chapter 59 in Personal Property. Residential, 67.4928. Commercial, 22.8519. Industrial, 3.9302. Personal property 5.7251. The factor for such classification shall be 1.57. Council, uh, I need a motion. Yeah. Motion to adopt. I need a motion. Okay. Order, um, Mr. Clerk, uh, and in order to adopt, please call a roll call. He's there. Yes. Barnes. You said 1.57, correct? 1.57. Yes. Yeah, yes. Cruz. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. No. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. No. I want to take my vote back. Since having any affirmative, two in the negative. The order has been adopted. M Mr. Council Chairman, I apologize. Um, I, can I change my vote? Sure. Yeah. Yes. I, I changed my vote to no. Six in the affirmative, three in the negative. Mr. Mr. President, make a motion for reconsideration. The hopes does not prevail. Second. second. Motion has been made and seconded for reconsideration. Hopes it does not prevail. All in favor of reconsideration? Two, three. All opposed? Consideration fails. Any other business to come before the special city council meeting this evening? Seeing none, the special city council meeting has been adjourned.